Greetings, Mathies. This is Mrs. Mounts, and I am going to go over how to solve two-step equations. But first, your Laffy Taffy jokes. All right, let me get out of those. And here we are. Um, right away, I want you to go ahead and get these notes. Well, the notes here for the three vocab words. So if you need to pause, go ahead. I think I also have those on the Canvas page for you. So you go ahead and get those copied. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on, but those three terms I will use quite a bit as I'm going over how to solve these two-step equations. So I'm going to go over example one. I just want to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see it. Okay, so this is saying 2x plus 9 equals 7. We are totally going to undo. So if you think about um, order of operations, the last thing we do is add and subtract. Well, this is a constant. And we want to do everything that's furthest away from the X. Remember, our whole goal is to isolate that. Now, what I like to do is I like to highlight that X. Feel free to do that. I do use a lot of color when I go over my videos. I think that really does help some of you. So the first thing I'd like you to do is draw that vertical line. We're going to keep this equation balanced. So if I do something to one side, I have to do it to the other. This is saying plus nine, the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. And you had that right there in your notes. So I do that to both sides. Now I'm gonna go through the math a little bit quicker. You can always pause it, use a calculator just to verify, but I just wanna get through these notes for you. So I'm going to bring down the two X. What ends up happening is I'm simplifying plus nine, minus nine, that gives me zero. I like to just zap it or put a zero there, a Z. Negative nine, negative seven, minus nine is negative 16. Same sign, you add them together, sign stays the same. If you need to type it in, we just went over that. This would be negative seven, subtract nine. Now our last step here, this is down to a one-step equation. This is indicating multiplication. This is a coefficient two times x. And remember that that definition is a number that's multiplied by a variable. So the inverse of multiplying is to divide. And I will get x equals negative 8. I'd like you to circle it. I'm going to go over how we check this. So I'm going to write the original equation to anywhere I see uh, my highlight x, I am going to put my answer in parentheses. Plus 9 equals negative seven. This is the original equation, except I have substituted negative eight in for x. Now we just follow order of operations. Two times negative eight is negative 16, plus nine equals negative seven. There's our check. Negative 16 plus nine is negative seven. And so we know negative eight is the correct answer. Number two. Draw your vertical line. You can probably see that we have this negative x divided by 2 minus 10. Okay, so we're going to undo subtract 10. We're going to add 10 to both sides. I'm going to zap it out. Let me highlight the x there. I think that does help some of you. So I just bring this straight down. Negative x over 2 equals 1 plus 10 is 11. Now, I have a couple options here. I'm going to put invisible one there. The reason being, anytime I see a fraction, I like to multiply by reciprocal. You can also multiply by negative two. Okay, so that's either, um, it's really the same thing. Um, some kids would want to divide by negative one half. Okay, so there are three different ways that we could solve for x here. Uh, that's just it. Um, each one, each and every one of you may do it a different way. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. See, look, it, it's the same thing as multiplying by negative two. Okay, if I want to get x isolated there. Okay, so I like to, and I forgot to do that on the top one. Two divided by two is one. Just back up and put that there. Remember, that's the goal is just to get it to be one x, just to see what one 
x would be equivalent to. 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. We're going to circle it. I'm going to substitute it back in. That's our check. You can see I had the word check up there. Anywhere I see that variable, I'm putting in negative 22. Now look at there's a negative in front of it and a 2 underneath. Get that negative there. And subtract 10, that equals 1. That's the original equation there. Order of operations, here's my parentheses. The opposite of a negative is a positive. So um, that uh, opposite, negative, becomes plus there. 22 divided by 2 is 11. And there's our check. 1 equals 1. That's awesome. So we know that our answer, x equals negative 22, is correct. All right. <laughs> this next one, it's actually a three-step. Sorry about that. Um, but I just wanted to give you an example of something like this. If I were to say it out loud, negative 3w plus 4 divided by 7. So the last thing I said on this side is divide by 7. Remember, we're undoing it. So I am going to multiply by 7, both sides. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Bring down, let me highlight there that there for you. Bring down negative 3w plus 4 equals negative 35. Now I'd like you to go ahead and work it out. I'm going to work it out too, but I'm just not going to talk. You go ahead and finish it out here and see if you do the same thing I do. All right, I had to squeeze it in there. See if you ended up getting that answer also. Okay, so now I'm going to check it here. I'm going to slide this over a little bit so you can see. So the original equation, negative 3, I'm going to draw a squiggly line here. Um, negative 13 was my solution. That goes in the highlight. I'm substituting in. Order of operations, I'm going to go ahead and simplify that numerator. Negative 3 times negative 13 is 39. Oh, okay. I got to go back. I am so sorry. So look at I even made a mistake there. I was like, I knew. See, I was doing the check and I knew something wasn't right. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, my fault there. So negative 3 times 13 is negative 39. <laughs> See, I knew I was checking it, and it wasn't going to work. And you probably spotted that, that the answer was positive. Okay, so now when I check it, negative 39 plus 4 is negative 35 divided by 7. There's my check. Negative 5 equals negative 5, so... Yeah, that's a perfect example. I had negative 13 there, and I knew that just was not going to work out correctly. Hey, it happens. That's why you should always check it. All right, last one. Hopefully this will, one will go a little bit quicker. So on the right-hand side, we have the variable. Let me highlight it. 178, that's a constant right now. And so we need to take that over the other side. You know, constants like to hang out with each other. Uh, these variables are just like, hey, I would just want to be left alone. Okay, so I am going to subtract 178 because right now it's a positive. And so that's how we can zap it. 178 minus 178, that gives us zero. Now, don't be shy about this. I would use a calculator here, okay? I can be shy about it. So I'm going to go 34 subtract 178. Okay, so there it is. Negative 144 equals, now bring this down, negative B. Invisible 1, so it's invisible negative 1 because of that opposite sign in front of it. I am going to divide by negative 1. And so we end up getting a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And that's okay if the variable's on that right-hand side. That can happen sometimes. 
All right, let me slide this up a little bit. I'm going to substitute in 34 equals 178 minus 144. Remember, I put that in parentheses. And if I were to type that in, or I could do it mentally, but I would get 34 equals 34. That's my check. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand. Uh, sometimes I, I'll have students do the check and they're like, oh, 34 is the answer. No, absolutely not. What you circle here is the answer. We're just checking it to make sure it's balanced. Just like that example up here, if I would have kept going and I had positive 39, 39 plus 4, that would have been 43. And divided by 7, there's no way I would have gotten negative 5. Okay, so because I checked it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had the sign wrong. Okay, so what we have circled on those four, on our examples here, those are the answers. So if you were typing this into Alex or some program, this is your final answer, the ones that are circled. All right, go ahead and glue that in your book and we'll do some practice.